So good morning everyone and uh, as uh, Arvind already mentioned, this uh, topic is going to be an overview of the UNO platform and uh, uh, my introduction is already covered, so I'm going to uh, skip that. But uh, in case anybody wants to reach me, uh, whoever is attending this live session or maybe and uh, LinkedIn handles are mentioned. Uh, before I proceed, uh, a few disclaimers. Number one, all views and opinions are my own and do not represent those of my previous or present employers. Secondly, this presentation might contain copyrighted material used under standards of fair use without seeking permission from the owner. And third, this presentation, see, I don't work on this technology on a day-to-day -day basis, so it's quite possible that this presentation may not cover all the relevant facts or the most up-to-date information. So please uh, exercise diligence and uh, do the research from your end before you take important decisions related to your work. Now, today's session is going to be a high level overview, uh, keeping in mind that the audience for this session, um, those who are attending in live, as well as those who would be watching this recording later on the Devopedia channel, uh, will include people with varying levels of expertise from beginner level to expert level. Uh, so this is going to be a very broad overview without diving too deep into specific technical details. If anyone is interested in having a detailed session, please get connected with the Devopedia leadership and we can see if we can address them in a separate session. In today's session, we are just going to explore at a high level the who, where, what, when, why and the how of this innovative technology called UNO platform. And after that, we will look at how to get started uh, developing using this platform, the tools that you need to use, the uh, how to configure the environment, and we will have some simple demos as well, which will give you an idea how this uh, you know, technology can be used. So let's start with what is Uno platform. Uh, it, this is basically a UI platform to build apps for multiple platforms like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, and web using C Sharp and XAML. C Sharp is a programming language and XAML is, I will be covering that in detail. Uh, it is written as XAML and the full form is Extensible Application Markup Language, but the pronunciation is XAML, similar to or rhyming with CAMEL. It is a markup language which is used to create the user interface of applications. So since this uh, technology is used to build apps for multiple platforms, this can also be called as a cross-platform application framework. It is a single source code-based solution, which means you just need to write once and you can deploy everywhere. Now, when you say everywhere, it doesn't include embedded systems and uh, you know other uh, platforms. Uh, we are mainly referring to the operating systems mentioned here in the first bullet point. You can have applications also with the single code base, you can actually create applications which can run on multiple uh, platforms. It is free and it is an open source uh, framework. So you don't have to pay anything to use it. And basically it extends the Win UI 3 uh, API of provided by Microsoft and uh, which, which is actually an evolution of the UW platform or the universal windows platform uh, so win ui3 is just an evolution of uwp so it extends the win ui3 and uwp capabilities to other platforms now why is this important when you look at application development today any business for that matter or even if uh, you're developing for fun uh, if you're an independent developer or if you're a student uh, if you're developing an application for any platform for that matter, you can't restrict to just one platform right? because users are all scattered. Many of the uh, users use Android, many use iOS. Uh, and in, in if you look at uh, the laptop and desktop users, again, you have Windows users, you have Mac users, you have Linux users. And, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, beyond this, the web is the most pervasive uh, area where, you know, applications are accessed on the browsers as well. Now, if you have a product idea 
and you want to develop an app which others can use. How do you go about it? Now, if you want to develop for all these individual platforms, each of these platforms has a separate technology stack. For example, if you want to develop for Android, you need to have the Android Studio uh, installed, and then you'll have to develop your application using Java or the pro latest programming language, which is Kotlin. If you want to develop for iOS, you have to buy, first of all, you have to invest in a MacBook or a, or a Mac computer, and then you'll have to install the uh, ID, which is Xcode, write the program in Swift. Uh, the earlier it used to be written in Objective-C. And if you're developing for the web, again, you have a host of other uh, skills that you need to have. Similarly, if you want to develop for Windows, you have multiple options. You are starting from Windows Forms. Uh, you, you can even develop using older technologies like Visual C++, et cetera. Uh, but modern uh, you know, uh, development uh, practices use technologies like Windows Forms. Then it came, came WPF, window, it's also called as Windows Presentation Foundation. Then you have this UWP or the Universal Windows Platform, etc. So you can see that there are numerous technologies available for each of these platforms. And it is actually quite mind boggling for people to choose which one to go with. While you can always get the best performance and the best experience when you develop with the respective native technology stack, it is just not economical. It is just not feasible. First of all, you will have to, uh, I mean, if it's a business, you will have to invest in multiple teams with multiple skills and you will have to do have multiple uh, development workflows in parallel, which is all going to increase the cost. And if you're going to do it in a sequential manner, then the time to market or uh, time to get the app to the market will be uh, very too long uh, just because of the time it takes for developing for each of these platforms. And remember that you are just not developing it once. You also have to maintain it. There will be always feature improvements, enhancements, bug fixing, etc. to be done. So it is going to be a huge task for anyone who is developing for multiple platforms. And that is where cross-platform application frameworks shine. The whole idea of having a single source co uh, code base and then deploying it on multiple platforms makes it an attractive proposition for application development. Now, who is behind this UNO platform? So it was originally developed by a company called Inventive, which is a Canadian software design and development company. So the story is uh, actually uh, goes back to 2013 when there were not too many options to develop cross-platform applications. Uh, it's almost 10 years back. And at that time, this particular company, they had a good expertise in developing applications using .NET framework. And uh, because a lot of their customers were also asking them to create applications for Android and iOS. So they thought that rather than retraining their staff or duplicating the effort uh, by creating multiple versions of the same software for different platforms, they decided to invent a way to compile the code they, that they wrote for the Windows platform. When I say Windows platform, primarily at that time, we used to have another mobile platform called Windows Phone, which is already uh, extinct. So the applications which they developed for Windows Phone and the universal Windows platform, they wanted an easy way to migrate it to other platforms like iOS and Android. And that is how this uh, platform was actually created by them. And Within three, four years, I think this became very uh, popular. And uh, when Microsoft also came to know, they also uh, supported them. And uh, with uh, uh, the management deciding to make it open source, uh, which they did it in uh, year 2020, uh, this has become one of the most uh, talked about technologies today. Uh, the reason being that among all the different other options that we have to develop cross-platform applications, uh, which I'll uh, show in the next slide. Uh, you have the uh, advantage of developing once and you know running it almost and <clears throat> deploying it almost on all platforms, which includes Windows, Mac, OS, Linux, and all the mobile platforms like iOS, Android, Tizen, um, and even uh, yeah. So it it covers almost all the platforms. And uh, in 2020, when they open sourced it, they also introduced support for WebAssembly. <clears throat> now, we'll talk about WebAssembly in detail. So uh, that is how this platform has actually become popular. Now, it is open source with more than 250 contributors. 
if the entire source code is available in this particular GitHub repository, you can have a look and you can also be a contributor if you like to. Now, why choose Uno platform? Number one, as I've already mentioned, efficiency. So it reduces time to market. It streamlines development so that you know you don't have to develop for multiple platforms. You can develop for all the platforms at one shot. Second, consistency. You can maintain a consistent user experience and features across platforms. So if, if you have multiple teams working on different uh, you know uh, platforms, then it is quite possible that you know they might be uh, slow in catching up with feature changes, etc. Whereas in this case, you can have a consistent experience across all the platforms for your application. The third is the community support. It's it has got a very active and growing community. As I uh, mentioned in the previous slide, more than 250 contributors are already actively involved here. So it is through this uh, uh, open source development, the power of open source development and transparency, which is uh, going to help in its continued development. And it is future proof as well because the, the platform adapts to the evolving technology trends. So like uh, initially the support was for UWP, but as Microsoft uh, evolved, you know, brought in Win UI3, which is an evolution of UWP, even the UNO platform has actually now started supporting Win UI. Likewise, they have also brought in support for WebAssembly. So they keep in, they ensure that this is a future pl proof platform. Now, that this is not the only UI platform for developing cross-platform applications. As I mentioned, there are many other solutions on the market. So just be, let us briefly look at this so that we understand what are the advantages of UNO you know, platform. So the established uh, or, or the most popular frameworks are listed here. There are many others which I have not mentioned here, but the most popular ones are Flutter, which is actually uh, de uh, developed and or which is created by at, at Google. Uh, it is primarily targeted at web developers who, who come from uh, web development background. So the um, the Flutter is a framework which allows you to develop applications for multiple mobile platforms. It is not meant for desktop or Linux, etc. It's primarily targeting multiple mobile platforms. React Native is again for web developers who come from a React background. Those are very good with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and uh, React framework. React Native is actually a port of React framework. React framework is developed at Facebook. React Native is a port of that. It, it, uh, after it was open source, uh, they developed a port of that for the mobile platform. And that again helps you develop applications for mobile, uh, different, uh, you know, mobile devices like iOS and Android. Then we have Native Script, which is a very uh, interesting framework, which is developed by a company called Telerik which is primarily targeted at those who come from an Angular development background. And as, as most of you would be knowing, Angular is a framework or it's a web development framework similar to React, which is quite po popular. So in, if you look at web development uh, technologies, Angular and React are uh, the most popular, uh, you know, front-end frameworks. So uh, native script helps Angular developers to also develop applications with the knowledge that they have in Angular and the related technologies like uh, ECMAScript and uh, HTML and CSS, etc. So without having to learn anything new, without having to learn Kotlin or uh, Swift or any other language, they can develop applications which can run on mobile phones. So the first three, if you look at it, they are all targeted at web developers. Now, the, the next three are all targeted at .NET developers. Now, .NET development, is normally done using C sharp. So people who are already having that kind of a background, uh, who are good in uh, C sharp, they, Microsoft uh, introduced a number of options. Uh, one is Xamarin. Xamarin um, is a company which Microsoft acquired, which helps to build cross-platform applications. Uh, and .NET MAUI, or multi-application user interface, is an evolution of Xamarin. Uh, which is now in uh, uh, promoted, being aggressively promoted by Microsoft as well. And uh, these two are promoted, are developed and promoted by Microsoft themselves. They also have a good number of users. And uh, Avalonia UI is another option. Avalonia is, uh, uh, you know, I, in terms of the platforms that it can address, Avalonia is the one which. Uh, is matching or at least matches closer to uh, UNO platform 
uh, in the support that it, they have for all the platforms, including Linux. Uh, but the way the, uh, the code works, it is slightly different. While Avalonia uses a, a library called Skia to draw the user interface, uh, you know, platform basically uses the WinUI platform in for Windows. Whereas for other platforms, uh, non-Windows platforms, it uses the ski app. So that is how it is different. So uh, the advantage with the uh, Uno platform is it is the first single code base. Android and Linux and also for WebAssembly. So where can you develop and use? Now you can use any platform for development. You can develop it on uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, on Windows, you can use multiple IDs like uh, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio IDE, which generally are used by .NET developers. Uh, Mac OS also you have Visual Studio Code as well as Visual Studio Code. Whereas in Linux, you can directly use Visual Studio Code uh, with the respective tools installed. So. Uh, you can use any development uh, platform for uh, creating applications using, you know. And when you develop applications, uh, the, uh, the list is mentioned here, you can develop it uh, targeting Windows uh, OS, Mac OS, Android, iOS, uh, Tizen. Tizen is, in fact, a mobile application framework developed at Samsung. Uh, it is just not meant for mobiles. Uh, it is also for all the appliances as well as uh, the, uh, the the different kind of devices which uh, samsung manufactures so samsung had this idea to um, reduce the dependency on android which they were using for their mobile phones and they wanted to have their own operating system uh, which will work across all devices manufactured at samsung including um, mobile phones smart watches tv washing machine fridge uh, you know, all these smart devices, smart refrigerators, smart washing machines, etc. So they wanted to have a common operating system so that they can build, uh, they, they have better interconnectivity and they can build applications which talk to each other. Uh, coming to uh, Linux, uh, you can, your uh, application which is developed in, you know, will work on all flavors of Linux, uh, all, all distros of Linux. And uh, for web, Basically, Shivraj, your audio is not uh, proper. Sometimes I'm losing it. Hello? Is it better now? Yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just keep the uh, mouthpiece closer to my mouth. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, so, WebAssembly is like an assembly language which browsers understand. We'll talk about it in detail in just a minute. Now, just for reference, uh, these are the different uh, versions which are supported in this in these platforms. Uh, this is just for reference when you go through when you go through this uh, presentation later. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, there's a wide range of support for all the platforms. And these are the minimum version supported. And there are some notes as well, uh, which uh, will give more information on the respective uh, platforms. Now coming to WebAssembly, we, we, we talked about, uh, you know, platform also providing support for the web. Uh, so basically when you're developing the web, what, uh, you know, platform does is it actually creates an application which uses WebAssembly. Now, what are the advantages of WebAssembly compared to uh, writing an application using the conventional technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Now, WebAssembly is a lower level code. Uh, as you all know, JavaScript is a high level scripting language, which means it's more uh, designed to be human readable and, and flexible, but it can become slow to while ex during execution. Uh, whereas the, this WebAssembly being a low level language is closer to the machine code that the computer, uh, that, that the processor or, or the browser can uh, interpret. So this closer to the mental approach makes it more efficient when it comes to code execution. 
The second advantage is ahead of time compilation. Once again, JavaScript, as you know, is a high level language and uh, it, it requires to be interpreted by the browser at runtime. There is no compilation which happens, whereas uh, the WebAssembly is compiled ahead of time into a binary format that the browser can load and execute faster. So that is what makes WebAssembly faster. And this is a huge advantage, when, especially when you have very interactive applications, which is which are rich in content, maybe like games or graphics, animations, etc. WebAssembly really shines. The third advantage is predictable performance. Now, JavaScript, uh, when you generally write an application using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, JavaScript is interpreted by the respective JavaScript engine of the browser, which is all different for different browsers. And uh, it also depends on the device hardware and the code complexity. Whereas, uh, since uh, the web assembly is uh, going to give you uh, you know it, it, it's it will be a compiled into a common format in case of web assembly it will be more predictable and consistent when it comes to performance across different browsers uh, another advantage is that uh, web assembly can take advantage of multi core processors and uh, uh, take the advantage of parallel execution as well which means some uh, tasks can be processed simultaneously whereas javascript is traditionally uh, it runs on a single thread, which limits its ability to utilize the modern hardware effectively. And uh, WebAssembly is more suited for uh, very computationally intensive tasks like mathematical calculations, numerical calculations, 3D graphics, uh, physics simulations, any anything which involves a lot of numerical calculations. Uh, WebAssembly is much more suited than uh, JavaScript. The JavaScript may, uh, you know, might actually struggle to match the speed of WebAssembly in such scenarios. And finally, the overhead. JavaScript has some runtime overhead uh, for features like uh, garbage collection or maybe for uh, dyna uh, dynamic typing uh, and so on. Whereas WebAssembly eliminates all this overhead because they don't have to deal with all these language features. So this makes WebAssembly uh, more uh, effective than having your native languages like JavaScript for browsers. So when should you consider, you know, platform uh, when you first of all, when you want to save time and resources by maintaining a single code base, this we have already discussed advantages of cross platform application development. So you can save a lot of time and effort and resources. Uh, second, when you want to reach a wide audience on different platforms, um, if, if you if you want to target uh, that your app reaches maximum number of users then you'll have to look at options like a cross-platform application uh, framework and uh, you know platform is a good choice there and uh, finally when you want to leverage your c sharp and xaml skills because the application is all going to be written in c sharp and xaml and uh, with the same skill you can develop for all the platforms without having to relearn uh, or reskill or uh, cross skill in other technologies Now, this is a architectural diagram of how the UNO platform works under the hood. So uh, I'll not get into the specifics again, keeping in mind that we'll have very beginner level audience. And uh, the, the whole, the gist of this uh, architecture is that the application is going to be written in C sharp and XAML. And it is, uh, when, when the application is running on Windows, it is going to use the ordinary WinUI 3 uh, API. Uh, it is compatible with the WinUI 3 API. So it uses WinUI 3 API when it is executing on Windows. And we, which means that uh, no platform. So they are like, you know, uh, uh, interchangeable. And uh, you can actually recompile the uh, win existing WinUI or UWP code if you have any. Uh, you can easily recompile them for using on any of the UNO platform applications, which means you can easily export them to other uh, platforms as well. And uh, when it is going to execute on uh, non Windows platforms, then it is going to be converted uh, appropriately uh, and uh, it extends the WinUI capability into those platforms as well. So uh, as, as I was mentioning in the previous slide, the application logic will be written using C-sharp and the user interface is going to be written using XAML. 
later on when i am giving a demo i will explain for those who are not familiar with xaml i'll explain how xaml actually helps uh, because you can write the entire application using c sharp itself uh, but using xaml also uh, brings has its advantages it's uh, more declarative and it helps to develop user interfaces faster uh, i'll demonstrate that when we uh, get into the demos now we also have platform specific bindings and as i mentioned on windows it's going to be compiled into a winui application and non windows platforms there is a uno.ui library which reproduces the winui api success on those platforms uh, uno platform also leverages a, a ahead of time compilation and the shared code is compiled into platform specific executables or assemblies and this this compilation um optimizes the performances and uh, ensures compatibility uh coming to platform specific output yeah, uh, when when you develop applications using the uno platform which you will see later when i show the demo you will have uh, the option of expo uh, or creating the platform specific output or generating the platform specific output for each platform uh, whether it is android apk or ios app bundle or web assembly files you have the option of uh, generating those platform specific output in the tool itself so there is no need of doing anything in addition and uh, then you have access to all the native device features and apis so developers can use the platform specific code when needed to interact with device hardware and finally uh, you have uh, platform specific tools and emulators to test the you know platform apps on different uh, platforms as well so how to start using the you know platform so you know you know platform uh, is supported on multiple ides the list is mentioned here so if you are uh, uh, using visual studio if you are coming from a dotnet development background uh, the, the developers will be more comfortable with visual studio so you know platform um, uh, extensions can be installed within visual studio which uh, helps you to create the applications quickly you can also configure it you for visual studio code uh, you have support for visual studio on mac as well then the uh, jet brains rider is also an id which is supported and uh, you can also use uh, linux as i already mentioned you can have visual studio and uh, the necessary tools configured in the linux environment to develop applications on linux now once you have installed all the application uh, or the necessary tools and uh, the dependencies Uh, you know platform uh, creators have also produce, uh, create, provided a tool called you know check which is uh, going to help in checking whether you have all the tools uh, and all the tool chains and uh, dependencies properly configured it's a very useful utility so i'll just cover that as well so when it comes to installing i mean just to save some time i am not going to uh, show the uh, screen uh, i mean i'm just going to show the screenshots of uh, the installation process so this is very important so when you are installing for visual studio 2022 uh, you uh, you know it, it, we we need to use visual studio 2022 that is a bare minimal requirement and uh, uh, visual studio 2022 comes with this option to install the different workloads and these three workloads must be selected as you can see you have to select asp.net and web development.net uh, multi platform app ui development which is .net maui and also the .net desktop development so with all these three installed uh, you will be in a position to start working on the you know platform and uh, as i mentioned there is a tool called you know check which can be used to check whether your tools are all uh, installed properly to install the you know check you will run this command in your command prompt uh, which is dotnet tool install hyphen g uh, which stands for global and the name of the tool is given there you know dot check and you can also update it using the update uh, command and uh, to run the tool all you have to do is uh, type uno check and that is going to uh, do a self test and give you the uh, you know a report which says whether you have all the necessary tools installed before you proceed so it's a very useful tool uh, and helps to configure your environment so once you've installed uh, visual studio and uh, the necessary workloads they they do not contain the te project templates by default so those can be installed as an extension so this is a place where you go and install the uno platform templates specific templates so in uh, visual studio there is an option for you to go to 
uh, uh, to manage the extension. So once you are in that particular dialogue, you can actually look search for you know and uh, or you know platform, and you will get those you know platform project templates which you can download and install. It, it's a fairly easy step. Uh, uh, it, it's all automated. There's nothing much to do. Uh, it can also be done using the command line uh, for .NET 7 and .NET 6. There are different commands. So depending on which version of .NET is installed in your machine, uh, the command will also change. And once you have the tools or the project templates installed, you can create a project right from the command line using this command. Uh, so, you know, uh, when, when you start a new project in the using, you know, platform, you have multiple options. Again, you have an option to create a blank template or you can go with a recommended template where you can specify what all details you want. Say you want to add authentication, you want to add uh, models, etc. So there are a lot of options. In options through the command line. This is just for reference. We will see how it can be done using the ID itself. Now, when you create a new project in Visual Studio uh, 2022, after installing the you know project templates, you will get uh, a list of uh, different templates. As you can see here, when you search with you know, you will see you will find you know platform app, you know platform library, cross runtime library, task library. There are sorry, test library and so on. But uh, we we are just going to look at a very simple scenario here. Uh, so we'll switch to a demo and then we will uh, look at uh, the how to create using the you know platform app template so let me switch to a demo now so i am uh, running a, a virtual machine in the cloud where i have installed visual studio uh, and i will be using this for the demos now i have not installed all the necessary tool tools for this particular demo so I'll just show you for Windows how it works. And it is going to be the same for all the other platforms as well. So when you start Visual Studio, you can actually create a new project. And as uh, discussed earlier in the uh, slide, you can search for the you know, project templates. And here you can see all the project templates which we have installed from uh, the you know, project templates are listed. We just need to select the you know, platform app to start our basic app. We can give a name and I'll just leave it the default name as you know, app one. And uh, these, these things are self explanatory the location of the project folder, the solution name, etc. There is no need to customize it unless you know what you're doing, but otherwise, it's uh, better to leave them with the default options and just press create. When you click create, now there will be a dialogue which comes up asking you to, uh, the, there will be a menu which will be shown asking you to select the type of template and do further customizations. So you have an option to go with a blank template and also with the default template where you have all these different options that you can do uh, localization and uh, material design, etc. So this is going to be slightly complicated for a first time user. So to, uh, for, to easily understand how it actually works, I'm going to choose a blank template for now. And there's an option to customize as well. I can go ahead and create it with all the stand default options. But let us see what are all options available for customization. So when I click on customize, here you can see that there are like, there is a kind of a wizard with multiple steps. And the first step is asking which, which framework I want to use. And I want to go with the latest framework, which is 7.0. And you can also use 6.0, which is the older one with long-term support. And as you can see, currently 6.0 is what Microsoft offers with LTS, long-term support. And .NET 7 is with standard term support and .NET 8 is in preview. So for this demo, I'll just use .NET 7 and click on platforms. Now, by default, all the platforms are enabled. As you can see, uh, these are all the target platforms for which you can uh, generate the platform specific output. So you have options to create the platform specific output for Android, iOS, for web, it is going to be WebAssembly. For desktop, it is going to be uh, for both for Windows platform as well as for Mac. And then you have GTK, uh, which is again for Linux. You can also generate a WPF application if you want to. And then uh, you have uh, another one called Linux Frame Buffer. Now, for a simple demo, I, what I will do is I'll just disable all the platforms which you are not interested in running just to save some time. So I will just leave Windows and uh, 
web assembly for now so that so we'll have just windows and web assembly so that we can see on these two platforms and it is going to be the experience is going to be same for all the other platforms the only thing is that you have to ensure that all the, the required tools are installed for the respective platforms now when it when it is for ios or android ios obviously you'll have to get connected to a mac uh, computer because you need a uh, mac to compile applications for ios for android you need to again install emulators you'll have to uh, install the necessary sdks etc there's a little bit of additional steps which will be required uh, so for that reason i will just show for windows and web assembly for this overview and then go to the next one which is on the presentation so here you have an option to select the design pattern for your solution you have different uh, design patterns like mvvm mvus etc but we will not uh, go with the uh, design patterns just to have a very simple solution structure so i'm going to choose no presentation framework coming to the theme you have material and you have fluent design theme material design is primarily uh, used when you want to uh, generate applications for android platform uh, where material design is the theme uh, fluent design is actually the design paradigm used by microsoft for uwp application so i leave it with the default of fluent uh, coming to the extensions again you have options to add extensions uh, which we we not need in this case so i'm just going to leave everything with the default uh, then we have an option for the projects uh, some other features etc so these are all optional and uh, authentication etc we will just ignore for now so you can see multiple options are available to uh, customize your solution as well so once you have done uh, your selection you can just select uh, or you can click on create and that's going to create the solution for us it will just take a minute or maybe less than a minute so uh, since we have actually selected only two platforms it was much faster but obviously if you are choosing multiple platforms it would have taken a little longer so our solution is ready and as you can see on the right hand side this is the if you are new to visual studio uh, this is the solution explorer a solution is nothing but a parent container which can contain multiple projects so in our case we have only one project and that project is uh, basically for targeting all these different platforms uh, so since we chose windows and uh, windows assembly we are having two only two projects here but if we had selected multiple platforms then you will have multiple projects coming for each of those uh, environment uh, platforms uh, and then we have one uh, folder which is our shared code so all the application i mean most of the application code that we will be writing will be in this particular folder only uh, so this is the uh, main screen main page.xaml which is the main user interface of this application by default so for this uh, particular solution what we will do is we will just edit this particular main page to see how it works so let me just uh, close this well you know the welcome screen and double click this uh, main page.xaml and in the beginning as i mentioned xaml or extensible application markup language is used to create the user interface of applications here you can see that how the uh, xaml markup looks at, looks like it is more like xml which is extensible markup language the rules which are applicable to xml will apply here you are going to use these tags so there will be like opening and closing tags and each of these opening and closing tags represents a particular ui control or a feature in the user interface so we have at the root level a page a page is the element that is uh, defining uh, that particular user interface and along with that you have all these different attributes so uh, we don't have to necessarily discuss all these attributes now these are all standard attributes there most of them are related to something called xml namespace so this is almost similar to namespace concept that you will find in any other programming language if you're familiar with c sharp or other programming languages which use namespaces it's almost similar concept here uh, where we have an alias for each of those namespaces and and in xaml all these namespaces will be generally uris they are not necessarily uh, urls that you can click and access some content this is a basically a, it's a string it's a unique string which indicates the name of that particular namespace and instead of using that string you can refer to it with this namespace like x and uh, whatever are the aliases which are provided can be referred to now 
the page, as I said, is the root uh, for node in this particular XAML file. And the page is like the, the parent container. Now, within that, you can have all the user controls. So in a typical application, you will probably have controls to take in user input, to uh, display data, to show some kind of content, etc. And in this case, we have something called a text block. A text block is a control or a user interface element, which is used to display text. As the name says, it is used to display the text. Now, uh, we will see how this is, uh, uh, you know, actually helping to save more time. Uh, I mean, it, it's more efficient when it comes to de developing user interfaces shortly. But you can observe that this text block is nested inside a stack panel. I'll explain what the stack panel does later. But first, let us run this application and see how this is working. Now, this has some de uh, default content here. It says, hello, new platform. So let's uh, change this to hello, Devopedia. Uh, let's run this application now. So I just need to save once. And uh, by default, the Windows application is selected. So I can directly click on this uh, play button, which means the application will be uh, started. But just to show you the other options as well, you have an option to build the solution in case you want to check if there are any errors. It's always a good idea to build once so that errors will be seen uh, and you can fix them. And once all the errors are, uh, you know, uh, once, once the application is successfully built, then you can run it. And as you can see, the build process is going on. You, you can see in the panel, the bottom of the screen. So normally after the build is successfully done, you will see at the footer, uh, there is a status bar at the bottom of the screen, which is currently saying ready. You will be seeing a message saying build succeeded. Yes, so there you can see build has succeeded. So if your application has got no errors, you will get this confirmation saying build succeeded. You can also see it on the screen here. And then you can now deploy it or you can run it on the target platform. So since we have chosen Windows platform here, when I run this now, I should be able to see a Windows application popping up on my screen with the text that we have put here, hello Devopedia as a message, which will be displayed in that particular window. Let us see if it is appearing. And there is our welcome message. So very easy to start with, as you can see, that uh, you know to create a project with the necessary configurations so starting is uh, you know to, to start a new project it's very very straightforward and very simple steps to follow of course there are troubleshooting guidelines given in the you know platform website in case you're facing any challenges you can always refer to that and uh, as i already mentioned there is a you know check tool which is available to check whether the tools are all properly installed now we have seen the use of a text block which is to display the text now, what if the stack panel was not there? So for, just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to comment this. And as you can see, uh, the commenting in XML and XAML is the same, where you use, uh, even in HTML, it is the same way of commenting. Uh, so once you comment this, this text block is still visible. And uh, what if I take a copy of the text block and insert here? Now, there will be an error. This text, block, this text block gives an error saying the property content is set more than once. The reason is because this control, the page, which is the parent control, it can contain only one child. So the equivalent C sharp code, if you look at the XAML and if you look at your audio is gone. Yeah, okay. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah. Apologies, I don't know whether it is due to my network, but uh, I have my headset properly in place. All right, so uh, coming to this text block. So when you're having multiple controls, which you will normally have in a user interface, you will have a number of controls, like you will have labels, text boxes, you know, different kinds of control, buttons and so on. So you, if you want to put everything in this particular uh, page, it is not possible to do it directly. And that is where you use something called a layout control. A layout control is just like a wrapper which holds multiple controls. A stack panel is one of those layout controls. So now if I un uncomment, you can see that the error is gone. 
So now I will be able to have both the text blocks inside. I, I can uh, comment it. Uh, I mean, I can just uh, format this file a little. Yeah, so that it is readable. So here you can see that both the text blocks are now visible. So here I can, if I run this application now, uh, both the text blocks will be visible. But since we have not applied any additional properties here for the text block, they will be like touching each other or will be too close to each other. So let's uh, include a few additional properties here. And when, when you are doing it in markup, we are normally using attributes, but they respond, they correspond to properties in C sharp. So where you would, in, instead of creating an instance of this uh, stack panel and then writing the properties one by one, let's say that I created the stack panel saying stack panel, SP equal to new stack panel. And then I have to write SP dot uh, horizontal alignment, SP dot vertical alignment, et cetera, in C sharp. Now, it is much more easier when we do it in XAML because you just have to declare. So I'm going to say I want a spacing of, say, 20, which means each of those children, whatever is inside the stack panel, they will be spaced at least 20 units apart. And let's change the text as well in the second text block and let us see the output and now this time I'm just going to click directly and as you can see when I start uh, debugging automatically the solution is built and then it is deployed so in case you are working on a large project then it is always a better idea to keep building it frequently so that you know your code is working without any errors uh, so you can use the build command when you're working on a very large project and you want to do it uh, you know at uh, certain stages without running the program necessarily so uh, here you can see both the contents are visible now instead of this text block let's uh, use a different control like a button a button as you know it's an interactive control you can click it and when you click you can say something should happen right so when i when i am going to use a button again there are different properties that i can actually use uh, let's say that uh, this button i am going to say should display the value of um So the button has a click event, as you can see here, when uh, in, in Visual Studio, you get all these icons, which actually say what they are. So there is an event called click, which you can actually use when you want to uh, execute some code when you click the button. So when you say click is equal to, uh, automatically Visual Studio is going to prompt you for an event handler. And it, it helps uh, the developers being productive by automatically creating an event handler for you. So instead of manually writing it, I'm just going to press enter so that it is going to be created for me in the code behind file. Now, what is the code behind file? If you look at this particular XAML pay, uh, file on the right hand side in the solution explorer, there is a small node which I can expand. And you can see that behind this XAML file, there is also a file which is ending with the extension of .cs, which is nothing but our C sharp file. So every file in uh, Uno platform will have two parts one will be the xaml file and one will be the c sharp file you cannot write your code uh, you cannot write your application logic in xaml xaml is only for the user interface you can do a little bit of um, you know uh, there are some features of xaml which we'll shortly talk about like data binding uh, etc which allows you to do a little bit of uh, you know uh, code processing in the ui itself but it doesn't support uh, uh, everything that you can do with C sharp. So whenever you want to have uh, application logic uh, in your uh, application, that has to be written in C sharp. And that is what we call as a code behind file. So in the code behind file, you can see that an event handler has been created for you. Just ignore all the other parts of this C, uh, C sharp file. Uh, for this level of discussion, we do not want to get into the discussion of what is the initialized component, etc. They are all there by default. Just leave it as it is. Do not delete them. You can see that there is an empty method which has been created uh, for us. Now, even if you're not familiar with C sharp, uh, basically, you know what a method is, right? It's like a function which can be executed. So in, inside this function, I can write whatever I want. So for this particular demo, I'm just going to use the debug class. And say debug dot right line
So this is just a very simple demo. As I said in the beginning of the session, we are not going to get into any uh, complex uh, solution. So I'm just going to display Hello Devipedia in the debug panel. So let us see if this is working fine. Once again, uh, let's let's go ahead and run this code. So there is a button here, which is hardly visible because I didn't provide any content for the button. But if I click on this button, you can see that I'm getting a message called Hello WPDA in the debug panel. So there are more things that can be added here, but uh, just for the simple demonstration, I just wanted to keep it very simple to show how the interaction between the user interface and the code behind file works. So all your application logic can be written in the code behind file and uh, the user interface logic can be written in the markup. That is the XAML file. Now, stack panel is just not the only layout just for the sake of uh, completion of this demo. Let me also show a couple of other uh, layout controls that you can actually use. So I'll just comment this part so that uh, we can uncomment and uh, check later. So there are other uh, layout controls like canvas and canvas for example you can say height equals 500 width equals 500 so these are all properties available for these different controls and within this canvas a canvas also you can also provide other uh, properties like background color now background color there are a lot of named strings which are available let us choose uh, something which is uh, easier on the eye uh, we'll choose aqua and within this uh, canvas, we can keep or we can place other things. Like for example, I can have a rectangle. So I'm just going to give you some, uh, use some random user con uh, interface controls just to show the possibilities. Now, rectangle is just a shape and uh, you can have a color. So I'm just going to say fill with red color. And uh, let's see what happens when I just use this. Uh, uh, for rectangle also, I need to provide some height and width. So let's give a height of 50 and width of 50 as well. Now let me repeat this three, four times. So the next one, I'm going to say red, green, and then we have blue. And maybe we have black. Now, all of them are going to be superimposed on each other because we have just de defined all these inside canvas and they are all going to be in the same place. We will not be able to see uh, red, green and blue because black, the last one will be placed on top of all of them. So we can actually provide different coordinates. So in the rectangle, you can provide something called an attach property because this is now a child of the canvas. You have an option to provide attach properties for positioning the control so i can say canvas dot left and canvas dot top as let, let me use 20 and uh, let's use different values so that all the controls will be visible for us Since this is a cloud-based machine, the response is a little slow while I'm typing. So please bear with me. Rectangles and the position of these rectangles are different. So we should be able to see all the four rectangles if everything is working fine. So let's run this application and check. So you can see all the four rectangles now positioned from the top. So canvas is like uh, a drawing canvas. Whatever you keep will be positioned from the top left corner by default. 
and you can use the attach properties that is top left right etc to position it exactly where you want on the user interface now this may not be always helpful because it is not responsive it is just going to be uh, put wherever you have placed it it is just going to be remaining there i can change it by using another uh, layout control called a grid we already saw the stack panel which is basically a control or which is which is a layout control which just stacks the content. By default, it is vertical. You can also stack it horizontally. Uh, and grid is another control. And when you're using a grid, advantage for you is that you get, get to keep it in or, or uh, have all these controls in different rows and columns. So now this canvas.left and canvas.top do not have any meaning. So let me remove them. Instead, I can use uh, grids, row and column to define. Now, when I want to have rows and columns in grid, I need to define them. So I'm going to say grid dot row definitions. So basically, the row definitions allow you to create uh, rows. The VM is slightly sluggish. Apologies for that. And for creating rows, you will use what we call the row definition. And row definition is nothing but you're defining a row and you need to specify what should be the height of the row. Now, there are different ways. Again, you can specify fixed height. You can provide auto, which means depending on what you're putting inside that the particular row, the height will be automatically adjusted or you can distribute it evenly. So if I'm going to say just star, which means that it is just going to be proportional to each other. So I'm just going to create few rows So I'll have four rows here. And uh, what this means is that all these four rows will be of equal width. Whatever is the height of this particular parent control, if you say it is uh, 500 by 500, uh, the height is going to be equally divided by all these different uh, rows. And here now you can specify which particular row it has to be part of. Now, row indexing starts with zero, just like any collection. In the, so we'll have to use grid.row. equals one when I want to use uh, when I want to put it in the second uh, row first row it will be starting with zero which you don't need to mention explicitly by default it is uh, going to be in grid row equal to zero so others I'll just move them into different other rows so with these changes let's verify how it works now So here you can see that this um, when, when I like adjust this particular window size, since we have given a fixed height for this particular layout control, that's a grid, it's not getting adjusted. But otherwise, if we had not mentioned that, then this would be uh, auto dynamically resizing as well, uh, like how we see in any other uh, Windows screen or Windows UI. So here you can see that the, all the rectangles are placed in different rows and all the rows are of equal height. So just to show you the, uh, you know, how, how XAML actually helps you to create the user interface. So the same thing can be done if you want to create columns as well. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but it's the same approach. So you define columns using column definitions and you can specify the width in the same way, in three different ways, either proportional sizing or fixed sizing or auto sizing, and you can place the controls wherever you want. Now, all this we have done so far on Windows applications. But observe that when we started or when we created the project, we also said that we also want to create the output for WebAssembly. So let us see how the same application runs on browser. So I'm just going to right click and say, uh, select this as a startup project. So you have an option in Visual Studio where you can just right click the project and say set a startup project. And now when I launch this application, when I start debugging, automatically this application will run in the browser and similarly if i had selected ios android etc it will automatically launch in the respective uh, platform whatever i have specified whether it is the emulator or the device uh, 
to, to whatever I have configured, it is going to launch there. Now in this demo, let us see how it is going to run in the browser. So by default, it is going to run on Edge, but uh, it, the same thing can run on other browsers as well, uh, because Edge is a default browser in this particular VM. You can see that it is opening a uh, URL, which is localhost, and uh, the you, you know logo is appearing first uh, because it's uh, processing this for the first time. I will do one thing. I'll take the same URL and also open it in Chrome so that you can see that it works on multiple browsers in the same way. So this depends on the machine uh, that we are actually using because I am using a VM with very minimal configuration. It's going to take a little bit of time because I use a very, very basic configuration of an Azure VM. So it's the performance is uh, slightly slower because of that because i have already got too many applications running on my uh, laptop so i did not want to take chances with this uh, demo and uh, cause it to crash so here you can see that the same application what what we saw on windows is identical on the browser and it is also going to open in chrome in the same way here on the right hand side you can see in chrome so this is web assembly now if you right click or if you go to the developer tools and if you try to uh, explore uh, what is this exactly uh, you know uh, what are all these controls corresponding to let me show that glimpse as well so if i just pick up one of these elements you can see that all these are like you you have the html markup you have divs and all that which are created and finally, the rendering is done through SVG, where the shapes are involved. It is all SVG. So all these are getting converted into HTML native markup. And this is uh, quite useful, especially if you want to have very, very interactive or rich user interfaces or rich user experiences when it comes to uh, games or animations or motion graphics, etc. on the browser. This is going to be very, very fast compared to having it on JavaScript. So that is the advantage of WebAssembly. So this is how you can actually run your applications. Uh, uh, I mean, I've just given a demonstration of how you can uh, start or how you can uh, create an application using Visual Studio, how you can build it and run it on different platforms. Now I can see that we are already on top of the R. So, um, so that concludes my demo. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them now. Thank you, Shivaraj, for that uh, really wonderful talk and demo. I'm sure uh, even those people who are not from a background of .NET and C Sharp would have understood the most of it. So I have a few questions, but uh, let's uh, give the audience a chance first. Anyone has any questions? Go ahead. Uh, uh, hello, hello, Shivaraj. This is Sudeep here. Uh, great Hi, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I have a question uh, on this. Uh, maybe I'll take the example of the VASM one. Uh, so in this case, you use the XAML. Uh, how does it work? It generates a C sharp code, and then that C sharp code is compiled to generate the VASM code. I I I know in the example you showed it was more HTML. Uh, things, but uh, I'm assuming there would be some way where it generates the VASM code as well. Does it yes. take the the C sharp and then generates it, or is there something else in between? Yes, yes, absolutely. So normally, when you are developing for Windows, when you compile a C sharp uh, .NET application, generally it converts that into an .exe file. Whereas mm -hmm. when you are selecting VASM as the desired output, when, when when you specify that the target output is VASM, then it creates a VASM file. It's a VASM file which can be deployed. So in this case, it is directly uh, deploying it from the local host, which is a, a development server. But in case you want to deploy it on any of the uh, uh, server as well, we have services provided on Azure, for example, uh, it's the Azure Static Web App uh, service. You just need to deploy it there, and uh, that file will be automatically downloaded by the browser, and it will execute it, and it will give you the uh, the, the UI. 
Okay, so so the XAML would gen generate the C sharp, and then that C sharp is compiled to Wasm. It's not like XAML directly compiled for Wasm file. Correct, it's, correct, it's, correct. Okay, okay, got it. All right, thank you. Yeah. Any other uh, questions? Yes. Others? I'll uh, go ahead and ask my question. See, uh, yes, I am from, uh, let's say, web app development background. Mm -hmm. And I regularly use, let's say, CSS styling. So, for okay. example, for layouts, I may use Flexbox or CSS Grid. So, how can I use that knowledge? Because now, if I have to create some sort of a layout, I have to learn new things in XAML, like what you showed as Grid or Canvas. I'm sure there are so many other things to learn. Right. Is there a way to uh, leverage what I already know from the web okay. background? Great, great question. And uh, you know, platform is providing a lot of uh, tools, additional tools. Like, for example, those who are coming from a web development background who are familiar with Figma, right? For example, for Figma, there is a to, there is an option for you to install some additional plugins and directly generate a XAML file for you know, platform in Figma. So. Uh, the developers have also considered the possibility of people coming from a uh, non c -sharp background who uh, want to create these user interfaces with their knowledge of web development. Uh, so there are tools like that. Uh, I don't know of any tool which is specifically available to translate directly from uh, CSS and HTML to XAML, but uh, tools like Figma will allow you. I have not used it. I've just read about it because I'm not a designer. Uh, so uh, I've seen uh, some demos of uh, the tool. Uh, where you can actually export uh, a design from Figma directly to uh, XAML in, you know, so that you don't have to write this markup specifically again. It's all about, uh, you know, saving time and uh, you just have to make the necessary additions in, uh, you know, your XAML, for example, data binding or uh, addition. The whole uh, XAML is made available automatically. So, that would be my response to your question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Other questions from audience? I have a question. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, is the deployed uh, uh, to the mobile platform application, mobile platform applications, and uh, the smartwatches? Very good question. Now, as I said in the beginning, when you create a project. Uh, first of all, you have to in, uh, ensure that all the necessary tools for the target platform are installed. Like, let me take the example of Android. Now, if you are going to develop on Android, you'll, you'll have to uh, install all the necessary tools and uh, you know to the SDKs which are required. And since they all come with license terms, they are not installed by default. You'll have to install and you have to accept those terms before you proceed. Once you do that. You will just like how we saw in our solution, we had uh, two projects. You will also have the additional project for Android. And if uh, you are uh, a developer and you want to develop, uh, you know, load it on your mobile phone directly, then side loading is possible. All you have to do is uh, enable the developer options on your mobile, connect to your USB port, and uh, you know that will appear here in your IDE directly. That uh, the device is now available for debugging. You, when you run this application, it will directly run your, on your device. That's the easiest way of doing it. But for large scale distribution, you cannot obviously do side loading. That is where you need to package this APK and publish it to the store. So you'll have to follow the guidelines given in the manual. There are all those step-by-step -step instructions given. So the output from this particular project, when you target for Android, you will have to take it, uh, compile it for publishing. Uh, and deploy, uh, you know, you need to have the developer account obviously for, on the Play Store, and then you can publish your uh, app in the Play Store, which people can download and install on their phones. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, uh, and how about a smartwatch? Like, is I have not, I have not uh, tried it personally, but uh, the procedure is the same. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So now, given that, uh, I mean, as, uh, as I understood from your demo, it is very easy to get started with, you know. Yes. So given this uh, context, what is the future of, or 
future of other things like Xamarin Forms, .NET MAUI. Will people using those platforms migrate to you know? Uh, how do you see that? OK, uh, so I am not representing Microsoft here to comment <laughs> on their technologies, but as an independent developer, the way I look at it is all these platforms are uh, meant to address people com coming from different backgrounds whose requirements will be different, right? Say, for example, those who have already built applications for uh, using WinUI or UWP for that matter, for them migrating to, you know, is faster and easier. Whereas uh, the those who are coming from a Xamarin background, those who have already because all these are having that dependency on the past, right? So whoever has developed earlier for Xamarin, uh, for them to uh, you know instead of rewriting the entire application, it is easy for them to migrate into .NET MAUI and uh, deploy it faster. Now uh, it is entirely to the choice of the you know the, the development team uh, depending on the target platforms also that they want to target. Uh, you want to have maximum coverage across all platforms, including Linux, uh, then either, uh, you know, uh, you know, platform or Avalonia UI would be a good choice. But uh, uh, .NET MAUI also has its advantages because that being developed at Microsoft, always they will have a lead when it comes to new features and, uh, uh, you know, uh, troubleshooting and fixing issues, etc. So, uh, it's again, uh, you know, it has to be a choice which the developers have to take. Now, advantage of uh, uh, Uno platform. One more advantage is obviously the the generation of Wasm code, uh, which is not available in the other platforms. So, if our your target is also to develop for the browser, then uh, it is better to go with Uno platform. That is the way I look at it. But they all are all open source. Uh, and we have a huge community which is supporting all these different frameworks. So it is more like the same, uh, you know, uh, question that we have, whether React or Angular, right? Both will continue to be used. <laughs> Addressing yeah. different uh, target or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Segments, yes. 